Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas. Our ongoing study in a philosophy of religion by Edgar Sheffield Brightman, published uh, way back in 1940. We're going to take a look at uh, pages 63 to 93, and basically it will conclude his phenomenology of religion. He does a, uh, in the first 93 pages, he presents a phenomenology of religion. And he presents it from the speculative side. But then he says, uh, by page 93, that he concludes this phenomenology of religion. And he's ready to transition into the practical. So this will conclude the lessons on a true speculative phenomenology of religion. After this lesson, we will look at the composite phenomenology in a separate lecture. We'll begin with block one. We've got prophetic religion becomes living religion. And that means that we reach Christianity, which has all the characteristics of prophetic religion. But specifically, it has uh, the rejection of national religion. It is monotheistic. Posits the ideal of love and unselfish sacrifice. There's belief in Christ's second coming. And it includes positing Christ as divine redeemer. And faith in God becomes the condition of salvation. So Christianity becomes the living religion that evolves out of prophetic religion. Now, it's here where we look at the psychology of conversion which includes the volitional, the surrendering, and the spontaneous. It involves the adoption of a scale of values. It involves the new creation of the self and acquaintance with God, prompted by natural growth or crisis experience. It also includes mysticism of a sort because uh, the truth of this conversion cannot be imparted in words and the self now has the possibility of reaching a state of illumination. It is a transient experience. It's not uh, ongoing. Conversion is transient and it is a passive experience. It's re We are on the receptive end of it. And then we've got the uh, psychology of prayer, this uh, living religion provides the self with well, uh, through prayer, provides the self with well-being, energy, and hope, and purpose. And it can take on the form of petition, communion, intercession, or praise. But because we're looking at a non-scientific method, but empirical methodology, we can look at the uh, sciences of psychology and sociology as applied to religion, says Brightman in Block 2. This is still considered empirical, but we look at uh, the sciences of psychology and sociology as applied to religion. And that means we look at the psychology of the individual. There are extroverts who are interested in others introverts interested in themselves, and ambiverts who possess both interests. Now, introverts are intellectual, extroverts are practical, ambiverts combine the two through the concept of religion. There's also the psychology of the subconscious. Feeling, desire, and emotion reside here. There are three aspects. Description and evaluation are not sharply defined in the subconscious. It addresses many different subject types. And religion is not simply seeking to reach fulfillment of the subconscious, says Brightman. Because Brightman says religion seeks honest, objective thinking about the real. Objective thinking about the real. He brings up that notion of the real again. That's going to be critically important for us when we get into the practical realm. But the self engages in honest, objective thinking about the real. And from uh, the psychological step, we move into the 
Psychology of Society, and that addresses consciousness, interaction with others, and includes readjustment of self to social situations, and the subconscious is always affected by social relation, but the self does go beyond the social relation through inventiveness, initiation, and through the love of the truth. And that brings us to the sociology of groups and institutions. We transition now into sociology. And there are four aspects of the sociology of religion. Terms are derived from social relation. Forms of religion are derived from social relation. Leadership is derived from social relation. Social life is colored by religious feelings. So they both interact with each other continually. So I inserted a little triad here for block two because there's really a, quite a bit of content there in block two. And one, the individual subconscious self performs objective thinking of description and evaluation of experience. And we move toward the consciousness of interaction through the love of truth. The self pursues readjustment to social situations and social institutions. Then the individual and the social interactive combine to reach sociology of religion where signs are formed through interpenetration of society and religion both. We reach sign formation. And that brings us to block three and uh, what Brightman says is the development of core beliefs and core values. He says there are eight core religious beliefs. Um, Number one, there are experiences of permanent value. There's belief in God. There is value and evil, both. Man is a spiritual being. There is purpose to human existence. The soul is posited as immortal. Religious experience is considered valid. And there is belief in religious action. And uh, these core beliefs confront the chief philosophical problems in experience. And when that happens, the phenomenology of religion transitions to the from the speculative to the practical. And that's going to ha that's what's going to happen after this lesson. Brightman's going to move into the practical. Now the value, the seven core values, religion is an experience of value. It is interested description. It is committed to value. It possesses a valuing attitude. It possesses faith in creation toward value, and it believes in the fact that value is preserved by and in creation. Value is preserved by and in creation. And so Brightman posits the axiom of conservation of value. Questions do arise out of the possibility of doubt. The Psalms are a series of value judgments. The Gospels are a record of events in support of value, and Christ's teachings addressed how to obtain value. But he does posit the axiom that there is the objective conservation of value that takes place. There's an objective recognition of a defined value in objective real existence. It's not merely a subjective category. There is objective value that exists because it's conserved by creation itself, by and in creation. <clears throat> so it gives us uh, this final section of teaching on the phenomenology of religion, but we're going to even pick up another lesson. We're going to do a composite look at that phenom phenomenology next, which I think is really important. What's key here is that in the previous lesson we talked about prophetic religion. Well, now we transition to living religion, to Christianity as the concrete living religion. And because we address the non-scientific method, Brightman says we can take up in a positive way psychology and sociology. And how does religion interact with psychology and sociology? And so we can take a look at um, the individual subconscious, an objective descriptive and an objective evaluation of experience. 
and then we interact socially to refine that objective thinking and then through that refinement we take up the task of sign formation. That's really where this lesson goes. We get to that point of sign formation. Once you get to the the realm of sign formation, then you're getting ready to move from that into phronesis, practical wisdom, and praxis action. So Brightman is preparing the reader for the transition in his manuscript. On page 93, he takes the major shift in emphasis. From the speculative to the practical, from speculative aletheia truth to practical phronesis wisdom, practical phronesis, and eventually praxis action, which is action and reflection. So we have a tremendous uh, lesson here that really gives us, uh, <clears throat> I guess if we had a recall triad, it would be living religion, sociology of religion and sign formation, and the development of subjective and objective value. We reach not just subjective value, but even objective value. So we go from living religion to sign formation to true, posited, objective value. From living religion to sign formation to true objective value that we posit as real, as the real. It is real, objectively existing value. <clears throat> so that takes us up uh, to page 93, and at, at page 93, um, Brightman actually says, I mean, he actually writes it out and says, this is the conclusion of my phenomenology of religion, and the remainder of the book will address the practical application of this phenomenology of religion as it confronts the uh, chief philosophical problems. That's why he words it as this phenomenology of religion will c confront the chief philosophical problems. And so we will begin a, an entire second level of phenomenology. We'll move, he, this book presents a double level of phenomenology. So it's really an amazing treatise, but this will wrap up that first phenomenology and uh, we'll conclude here, and then the next lesson will be a composite look at Brightman's Phenomenology of Religion.